Hi everyone and welcome to our Unit 4 screencast all about how things move and are transported across the plasma membrane. So we should remember from our discussion of cells that the plasma membrane is selectively permeable. It controls what can come into the cell and what can leave the cell. It doesn't let things that are large, that are charged, or that are polar to come through. And the things that are small, uncharged, and not polar can come through because the phospholipids are always moving around and flipping around. So this movement allows things that are small, nonpolar, and uncharged to slip right through that fatty membrane. So let's talk about the proteins in the plasma membrane. And the integral protein helps things that are larger, things that are charged, and things that are polar move in and out of the cell because they can't go straight through the phospholipids. They needed to find a different way. So this is what the proteins help with. So these proteins can either act as tunnels or they can change their shape to force things in and out of the membrane. So this orange one acts like a tunnel and the pinkish one changes shape. So the one that acts as a tunnel is called a channel protein and the one that changes shape is called a carrier protein. It physically carries things in and out of the cell. So how do things get into the cell and out of the cell? Well in this unit we're going to be learning about simple passive diffusion which doesn't take any energy, facilitated diffusion using these two types of proteins which also doesn't take any energy and active transport which does need some energy. So a simple diffusion you see things this is really small this red molecule so it's not charged obviously so it can move into the cell. So if you're small and you're not charged and you are not polar i.e. you're not something like water then you can move straight across those phospholipids into the cell and out of the cell. As long as you're moving from a high concentration of solutes to a low concentration of solutes and that doesn't take any energy at all, it just happens naturally because things want to be equal. With facilitated diffusion it also does not take energy and again there's two types of proteins that help to facilitate things moving in and out. You've got your carrier protein which will change shape and you've got your, I'm going to make this a tunnel, your channel protein or your ion channel protein. And be, both of these different types of proteins will help move molecules that are larger and might be charged and might be polar like water is and it moves those molecules into the cell and out of the cell and again it doesn't take energy because they're moving from a high concentration of whatever's moving to a low concentration. With active transport the reason it takes energy is because things are moving from a low concentration to a high concentration so it's, al so it's almost like forcing something to go in a direction it doesn't want to. And it's larger charged or polar things that move this way as well it's just they're moving backwards from the way they want to go. And the last way that things move into and out of a cell is with exocytosis and endocytosis. So this takes a lot of energy to do this. Here you see endocytosis happening where solutes are being brought into the cell as the cell forms a vesicle around those solutes to bring them in. Here you can see exocytosis happening where the vesicle is fusing with the membrane and dumping its contents outside of the cell. So again, you must be quite large for this to happen and it takes a lot of energy. So some examples of molecules that would move by endocytosis and by exocytosis would, would be proteins, uh, larger carbohydrates, and other things like hormones. So let's start by talking about diffusion. Diffusion is the process of molecules moving from a high concentration of solutes, solutes being the, the stuff, the molecules, moving from where there's a high concentration of them to where there's a low concentration of them. Here you see we start out with a high concentration on the inside of the cell then they will move to where there's a low concentration until 
they are of equal concentrations on either side of the membrane. So until they reach equilibrium. So it's kind of like you can picture it like this. A lot of sheep on one side of the gate and not very many sheep on the other side of the gate. They move from where high concentration sheep to where there's a low concentration of sheep. That's how it happens in nature at the molecular level. So again we've got simple or passive diffusion, doesn't take any energy, things just move straight across the, that phospholipid bilayer when they're small, non-charged and non-polar. You've got facilitated diffusion, again no energy because you're moving from high to low and those would be things like ions moving that way because they're charged, um, things that are larger like sh simple sugars and things that are polar like water moving from high to low, but they're facilitated because it needs a little help. So simple diffusion would be, and a great example of that would be if you put a little drop of dye in a beaker and eventually the dye spreads out evenly. And that's because it's moving from where there's a high concentration to where there's, where there's a lot of dye to where there's not very much dye, so it distributes itself evenly. Like you can see here, so you've got blue molecules and eventually they'll move around until they're equally distributed. classic example of this is when you spray a little bit of perfume in one spot of your house and pretty soon you can smell that perfume everywhere. So things are always moving towards equilibrium. We have equal concentrations of things. So what is a small, uncharged, nonpolar molecule that can move straight across those phospholipids by simple diffusion from high to low? Well, anything that's lipid soluble like fatty, like fatty acids are lipid soluble, glycerol is lipid soluble, and alcohol and urea are lipid soluble. You, of course, oxygen and CO2 move very easily across the membrane, the phospholipid membrane. So where in our bodies is diffusion extremely important? Well, when we're filtering our blood, kidneys do a lot of diffusion. A lot of diffusion happens at the kidneys. In your intestines, and a really important one, of course, is the lungs and the tissues where oxygen and CO2 is being moved back and forth frequently. And another example of diffusion happens in the mitochondria, where hydrogen is being moved in and out of the mitochondria inside our cells. That helps us make energy. So osmosis is our next topic and our last topic for this screencast. Osmosis is really defined as the diffusion of water. So this is how water moves across the membrane. You see here the water is diffusing across the membrane and it can't just go across the phospholipid bilayer. It has to go through an ion channel because it is polar. There are water molecules here. Here's our solute or our stuff in the green blobs here and you'll see the water molecules, way more of them on the left hand side. And the green molecules could be representing any anything, salt, sugar, ions, anything in the cell that's inside the water, inside the solution, inside the cell, dissolved. So the water, because there's a lot of it on the left hand side and not very much on the right hand side, the water is going to move from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water. It's going to move to where there's a lot of stuff, toward where there's a lot of solutes because it wants to dissolve them. So there's equal amounts of water and stuff on either side. So water always moves towards the concentrated side. But it has to do this with an ion channel. So let's forget about cells for a moment and look at this. This is called a U-tube. If we look at this U-tube, it's got a membrane separating the two sides of it and there's not very many solutes on the left, there's lots on the right, so the water is going to move towards the stuff, towards the right hand side. And so over time, the level of water on the one side, on the right hand side, is going to increase, get higher, because the water moves towards the stuff, towards the solute. So water always goes from where it's dilute, or more dilute, and it moves towards where it's more concentrated. So we can look at this example. If there were a membrane separating these two sides, 
you'll see there's starts out with way more water. There's 24 waters now compared to 16. More water started out on the left, but the water is moving to the right until the concentration of water is equal on both sides. So water moves because the solute can't move. The solute's too big to move normally, so it's much, much easier for water to move. So water passes through an ion channel and it goes from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water. Or you can think of it that water goes to the side where there's more stuff that it wants to dilute. And after it finally reaches equilibrium as this has, the water is still going to move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but it'll do that equally. So the same amount that moves to one side will be the same amount that moves to the other side. So the biggest thing to remember, the biggest memory trick is that salt sucks. Salt is the stuff, so it's not always necessarily salt, or the solutes that are in a solution, and salt sucks the water towards it. So wherever there's a lot of stuff, water is going to be sucked towards it. The water is going to move towards the stuff. Make sure you join me next class with all of your hot questions about diffusion and osmosis.